And at that time, the supporters of Comrade Zuma did, if you read the media, attack me for, for you know, um, leaking this document. So I said, but when, when did I leak it? Then I realized, no, it is actually through the inquest. If you go to the records, you'll find that the head of G, G, GCIS dealt with this matter, Maseko, James Maseko, to explain to the public that there was no leak. This matter came through the inquest process. Now, that's why I said I don't want to respond to staged interviews uh, where falsehoods are stated and, and, I mean, it's like fiction. There were, I couldn't have scrambled with a 16-year-old or something like that in the house about a note. Uh, I don't think they knew what was in that note. I only read it afterwards uh, and realized it's directed to the husband, to the family, and extended family messages in that statement. It's in the record in the inquest. So I don't know where this story about leaking it document comes from. All right, now to uh, respond to that interview, we are now joined on the line by a member of uh, the Zuma family, Edward Muzi Zuma. A very good afternoon to you, Mr. Zuma, and uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us here on SABC News. Thank you uh, very much, and uh, greetings to the viewers and the listeners of the program. So you've taken exception, I suppose, to uh, the Reverend's response. We've just uh, played the clip now uh, from the earlier interview he had uh, with uh, my colleague Desiree. Uh, you've taken some kind of res uh, exception and, of course, now sought to, to clarify certain issues. What are the, the issues or the problems that you find in what uh, the, the Reverend has said at this time? Has the Reverend lied, according to you? What is actually your... What, what do you recall of uh, what happened those years ago? Uh, thank you once again uh, to, the, to you and your viewers. Uh, I, I find it very much disturbing uh, to hear a whole man of a cloth uh, not being able to tell the things as they were then. Uh, I was there on the third day. Uh, I know everything that happened on the third day. Uh, some of the things uh, the honorable and respectful uh, reverend is saying are, are, are totally lies. Mm. Uh, they are totally lies. Uh, he was there, as he correctly put it. Uh, the question that one would ask is, how would an unresponsive person tell his or her child to take a note from a particular cupboard? Because this person is unresponsive, which is the situation that the Reverend found uh, Mum Kate in. Mm. I was there. Myself, personally, I do not recall any situation. No, in fact, not that I do not recall. It, it never happened. Uh, the note was never uh, handed to him the way he is explaining it. He's explaining it. Uh, we know what happened and how he got to know of the note. And the fact that he's saying... Uh, it took time for them to get hold of Comrade JZ uh, being the former deputy president at the time. Uh, it's a fallacy because I had told him where the deputy president was. Mm. And I had told him that I had spoken to the deputy president. And the deputy president had said to me at the time, I must come to him and speak to him and explain to him what really is happening. So there is something that he's really hiding as to why he's hiding it. He's the only person that knows, but I'm not going to say 
to an elder person that I respect like himself that he is lying, but he is not telling the truth. Mr. Zuma, let's, let's rewind even further then. Uh, the Reverend, Reverend Chikani, says that he received a call from Mekate uh, saying that uh, he should arrive at the house. And he said he was wrapping up some kind of a meeting. He then said to her, I will come after that meeting, in which her response, according to the Reverend, was that it would be too late if you come after uh, uh, that meeting. Are you saying that call didn't even happen? Because when you say uh, that Mekate was uh, not responsive in the first place, now we have to ask the question of whether or not that call actually did, did happen and did the Reverend indeed receive a call from uh, Mekate before her passing? The call might have happened. He is the one who will know, he is the man of the cloth, so he speaks more truth than any other person. What I'm saying to you, I'm telling you about something that I was there and I know. We are the ones that indicated to the paramedics as to what the situation is. The issue that he should be saying is that they arrived late, which I could agree with him. But the issue that uh, we never called any uh, medical assistance, the first thing we did, the first thing we did was to call the emergency uh, paramedic services to come to the phone. They did arrive, they arrived very late. He's the last person to say to us that uh, he was in a meeting because I had gone into a meeting with him and discussed that my mother, Mamu Kate, wants to have a discussion with him at home. Union buildings and the official residence of the deputy president at the time, which is called O.R. Tambo, is hardly two kilometers away. Yeah. It could not take you so much time to, 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 to come to that particular place. And I do not believe the story the Reverend is telling us that he was stuck in a meeting. That one I want to dispel and it's just absolutely not correct. That one he's not telling us the truth. He was not in the meeting. He had to consult whoever he had to, he had to consult so that he could be given either permission to proceed to go and see Mum Kate. Yeah. The Reverend doesn't deny the fact that, uh, you know, he took the letter, that he had uh, the letter. What he does deny is that he leaked it to the media and says that the, the, the inquest process is, is the reason that that letter was uh, made public. Is that not plausible to you? What is the actual issue when it comes uh, to this suicide letter that, that your mother penned? What is the bigger uh, sort of issue that, that all of you are now in, in, in disagreement about Mr. Zuma? Once again, with due respect to the honorable and respectful referent, uh, uh, I'm, I'm a very young man. I cannot say to an elder person uh, that is lying, but I'm always uh, uh, able to say that he's not talking the correct thing. You know, uh, the issue of the letter, we know what happened, Reverend. Wherever you are, I'm sure you're hearing me. You know what happened. You know the truth. Until you tell the truth, you will not find peace within yourself. You must tell the truth as it is. You know how the letter arrived in your hand. And this is the truth that needs to be told. However, and, and why aren't you telling us, Mr. Zuma? You are on the line with us. Can you not tell us then? Can you not tell us as the public so that we can get over this, uh, this, this, this fight that's now being drawn out with he said, she said? Can you not at this time, Mr. Zuma, tell us how exactly that, that letter got in the hands of Reverend uh, Frank Chikwani? Chikwani? If there is a lie, sir, please tell us what is the actual issue? What happened? The Honorable and Respectful Reverend just uh, said uh, there was an inquest. Clearly, it means inquest was false information. 
until maybe some uh, such that you say you want to repair, reopen the, the, the inquest, then uh, we will be able to tell the truth. Because what has been said by the Reverend is totally not correct. He's not correct in what he's saying. We know what happened. We know how uh, the letter arrived in the event. I was present myself, myself in person. Are you not willing to tell us how uh, that letter got into the hands of uh, the Reverend? Or do you want us to rather ask the, uh, the Reverend again? He seems very clear on, on his recall of uh, what actually happened. So clearly, clearly uh, the Reverend uh, uh, seems to uh, be uh, you know, recording the, the, the incidences and the incidences of the third day uh, very well. So I, I wouldn't be in a position uh, to be opening up because uh, the, 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 the long-term uh, issue on this matter is that we want that inquest to be uh, uh, reopened, mm -hmm. if needs be. But with us, we are saying we are discussing it because we want to find peace within ourselves. So I'm not going to be willing to tell you. But what I can emphasize is that what the Reverend is telling you is totally not correct. Yeah. He's, not, he's not telling you uh, and the people of this country what really transpired on the third day uh, of that particular December. He should find it within himself as a man of the cloth to tell us the truth. And I heard you earlier on uh, raising the fact that uh, he, he, post, he, he gave the, the letter uh, to the former deputy president, uh, he, he being uh, Jacob Zoom. But I, I, I can say it was never done on that on the very sad day. It was it it was on another day when he did that. Mm. Why, why would the Reverend day. have wanted to hold on to uh, this letter? I mean, he does mention the fact that he did make a copy, and he claims that that copy was actually uh, for the police. And again, I ask you, is that not a plausible story? Well, making a copy is a plausible story, but keeping the letter is a different story again. Why would you want to keep such things? What are your intentions? What is your agenda? It's, it's questions that we must ask him, and he must answer them. To me, he had his own agenda. And what do you think that uh, agenda was? The leaking of it? Well, look, when they speak about the leaking of the letter, the first person I suspected was him. He's the only person who saw this thing outside us. Who else would have uh, leaked the letter? He is saying uh, it might have been leaked by uh, whoever was investigating it uh, when there was an inquest. It's a story that we hear day in, day out in South Africa that whoever is investigating a particular issue leaks information. But he had an agenda himself. So he, he, he's, not, he's not being honest with, with, with us. He must be able to explain to us why did it take you time to hand the letter over to the former president, I mean to the former uh, deputy president at the time. He should be able to explain that to us. We do not know till today. Yeah. Why is this playing out uh, in, in, in the public, uh, Mr. Zuma? Would you uh, know why your brother, Tiruzani Zuma, and uh, uh, your father, the former president, uh, Jacob Zuma, have chosen to uh, approach this matter now and in this uh, uh, particular way? Is there a reason it, it wasn't privately done? While listening to the, the Reverend, he did mention the fact that uh, you are all like family and that even now you still see each other, you know, in, 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 on occasion, uh, whether it is uh, for certain gatherings and I suppose anything to do with uh, the, the, the ANC. Why was this not approached with him? Why have you not confronted him with the, these issues uh, personally, face to face? Do you know why your brother and your father have decided to open this thing up uh, so publicly? 
That, that, that's a very good question. Uh, I was expecting that, and I, I think I need to put matters into perspective here. Uh, my, my, my father, and his father, uh, at his age, he's aging. He's not getting any younger, but he's getting older. Mm. So if one of his children has a quiz or has a question, or he has he or she has something within him or herself to say, but I can hear that things happen, but how did this thing happen? The father has a duty to say, my son, before anything happens to me because of my age, I have to tell you these stories. You have to know the truth. I do not want to go down the grave without or, or not having tell, told you the truth. These are stories that need to be told to the children. It therefore becomes the discretion of the both parties, whether they publicize those things or they do not publicize those things. We cannot blame them. We live in a democratic state. We live in a constitutional democracy in South Africa. You do as you want, as we call it, freedom of speech, freedom of expression. So I see nothing wrong with the father engaging with his son. There's absolutely nothing wrong. Whether this thing is taken on social media, I don't know what the halabalu is about. Because my point is that here is a father, and here is a son. The son is asking questions. What happened to my mother? What happened to this and that? The father has to answer to these questions so that we do not have issues as we go along in life. Now, the reverend doesn't seem to be budging from uh, his story and his account of the details. So what now? Will it just remain as a... The Zoomers say this happened, and uh, Reverend Chikani says this happened. Because there's one account uh, from President, ja former President Jacob Zuma and another account uh, from Reverend well, Chikani. Look. And you've, said, you've clearly said to me, you're not going to be telling us how that letter got into his hands. So if neither of you are going to tell us how it happened, now what? Then what happens? What comes out of all of this? Oh, Halabaloo, as you put it. Let, let me clarify you. I'm not expecting the the respectful and honorable reverend to budge because he knows what he's protecting. It's only himself that knows. Uh, one day he will cleanse himself and say, this I've been hiding for years. Uh, I, I'm not going to blame him for that. But uh, what I'm saying is uh, the truth shall suffice at some point. And when the truth suffices, uh, people will then be clarified as to really, really, what is it that happened? You understand? Yeah. They might have their own agendas. I might not know. I'm not going to accuse anyone of anything. But my own assessment was that clearly uh, this was not an honest uh, intervention by the very reverend, you know, he, he, to me it was very suspicious the way he, he behaved and the way he acted. Nevertheless, he, he he's the only one who knows what his intentions were. I'm not going to be in a position to say that. Uh, what I can only say is, I, can, I, I would want to protect my brother and I would want to protect my father. If they want to err, uh, how they feel and what they think of whatever happened years ago. Allow them to do that. Nobody should stop them. Right. But with regard to the letter, I can want, I want to assure you now, myself as Edward Moses Zuma, I'm going to be coming out clearly in public to state how the letter arrived in the hands of the reverend. Then we can take it from there. Myself, I'm still going to talk. Okay. And, and, and on that, K 
can we expect more from the former president in terms of talking? Because when he opened that uh, conference call, uh, online call with uh, his, his son, with, the, with your brother, he mentioned the fact that you know, a lot of people are talking about Zuma and perhaps it's time uh, that he himself uh, starts, uh, starts to speak. Uh, are we expecting more from the former president in, in this way uh, to, to, to clarify some things that might have been in the public domain? And I'm not just talking about you know, the passing of, of your mother and Tuduzani's uh, mother, but just in general, politically, are we expecting the former president Zuma uh, to kind of communicate uh, with the public in this way about how things unfolded if uh, perhaps there were things that were said that didn't actually happen? And as he rightly, rightly said, a lot of people have actually been talking about uh, Zuma, but not necessarily Zuma himself. Are we expecting at this point to hear more from the, the former president? Maybe le, 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 let's correct this uh, uh, narrative or belief. Uh, the former president of the Republic, Comrade Jacob Zuma, has got nothing to do with all this. Uh, he is there sitting, discussing with his son. His son is asking questions on serious issues, be they politics, be they family, and so forth. There's absolutely nothing wrong there. Now, the son then decides that I will post these things to social media. Yeah. All right, well... It, uh... it, it, it's, it's, it's not the, the former president's fault. You need to deal and focus and, and, and interview the son as to what led to him sending out this thing. Mm. Former president, when he speaks, he speaks to his son. Correctly so. And we cannot deny the former president uh, that opportunity of discussing with his son. I mean, we are in a constitutional democracy. He fought for the, for the liberation of this country. The very constitution that we claim to respect and adhere to, he contributed that. Now, what then is the problem when he is exercising the very right that he was fighting for as a liberation uh, fighter? All right, Mr. Zuma, unfortunately, then... unfortunately, we are out of time. I would have loved to continue this conversation. But when you are yes. ready to uh, talk about how that letter got into the Reverend's hands, Please call me. We will host you. We want to hear you must that. Watch, you, must, you must watch part, you must wait for part four. Part I will four. be doing that. He's I certainly will. He's Promise to, to call me. everybody. Here. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Edward uh, Muzi Zuma there, the son of President, uh, former President uh, Jacob Zuma, chatting to us uh, there. And of course, he take an exception to uh, the Reverend Frank Chikane's uh, comments earlier on uh, today. That's it from us. Thank you very much.